Hi, this is Elizabeth Bright, and I'm an osteopath and naturopath practicing and living in Southern Italy, and I specialize in hormone function. Today I'll be talking about menopause, what it is and what it is not, and I hope younger women who aren't in menopause will watch this video because I'm sure you know that how we eat and live our lives when we are younger affects our future health. It certainly affects our hormonal health. And while to some extent genetics do indeed influence this, how we eat and how we manage stress, specifically stress in adolescence, can improve on our genetic health, as well as dictate our hormonal health for the rest of our lives. I certainly didn't pay much attention to this when I was a teenager. Still, even though we say, had I known this back then, I want to underline how important it really is. I certainly would have eaten differently had I known then what I know now. So menopause. Menopause is rightly associated with aging. But menopausal symptoms actually don't have much to do with how much estrogen you produce. This is also why women can have menopausal symptoms way before menopause. So what is menopause really? Is it this awful state of being with hot flushes or flashes? Bitchy tirades, weight gain, sagging breasts, and painful sex? Well, bitchiness has turned into mood swings. This would not be an acceptable medical description today. In the 1950s and 60s, however, it was called overreacting. One advertisement I, I found states, when the patient is too easily upset, think Meberol, which provided sedation without the sedative days. I will post some of the ads for drugs directed at menopausal women and their families from then to show you. One ad for a Milprem reads, in the menopause, transition without tears. Now she can cook breakfast again. It's frightening. When I went into menopause six years ago at 52, I Googled it and saw all of these horrible symptoms that just didn't sound like me and weren't something I wanted to experience. Of course, then I started second guessing myself. I started to wonder if I had some of them and just didn't know it. So I started my research into menopause. First off, I wondered, and don't you wonder, why double the amount of women are prescribed antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs compared to men? And these are prescribed to women between the ages of 45 and 64 during menopause. I discuss how this came about in my book, Good Fat is Good for Women, Menopause. And I will go into all of the symptoms, why they happen, how medicine treats them, and how I learned they actually should be addressed. I go into this in my book, and I will be do going into this in the series of videos. Menopause is supposedly not something to look forward to. Thanks to the media and the pharmaceutical industry, women fear menopause. We fear our bodies will wither away, that our bones will crumble, that our brains will dissolve into mush. But this isn't menopause, because menopause is actually a good thing. It's a deliberate evolutionary adaption that only human women, orcas, and pilot whales go through. This is quite the opposite of what the media sells. The media, and unfortunately medicine, present menopause as a time of immediate decay and decrepitude, even before, since they invented perimenopause in the 1980s. Oh yes, our bodies change. I'm 58 next month. And no, I don't look exactly like I did when I was 25 when I was supposedly in my prime, when I was supposedly at my most fertile. My skin is different, but I don't and didn't have saggy breasts, painful sex, immediate weight gain, mood swings, loss of cognitive function, joint pain, loss of muscle mass. And these are the images that come up when you Google menopause. I did have some of these symptoms at different times in my life. For instance, after I breastfed my third child, my breasts disappeared and I thought it was because I breastfed too many times. Lo and behold, when I started eating a high-fat diet, they returned. Some women who find their breasts change after nursing get implants, which can cause side effects and have to be changed after some years, but this is a minor symptom. But it does go to show how powerful the right nutrition is. And while menopause is natural, Women are taught to see it as something negative, and this is because it was invented by medicine, specifically by
by French physician Charles Pierre Louis de Gardin, who came up with the term in 1812 in his book of menopause or the critical age of women. Critical meaning bad, according to a French medical language historian. He described it as a dangerous condition. He combined two words from Latin, moon and stop. So medical texts, which have historically been written by men, treated menopause as an illness. Some medical texts by female doctors from the first classes of women allowed to attend medical school do mention menopause, but they mention it as a normal natural occurrence rather than as an illness that requires treatment for symptoms with pharmaceuticals. I will show you that all of those symptoms are caused by nutritional deficiencies and endocrine imbalance and deficiency, but not the estrogen deficiency you thought it was. So what is it? Menopause is natural, and it should be an easy and harmless transition. For many women, this occurs between the ages of 45 and 50. If you do have some of the symptoms I describe, it isn't because your period stopped. Menopause is not to blame. This is because menopause gives human women a fitness advantage. It is something we evolved to do, along with the big human brains we evolved to have. It ensures that the nutrition formerly reserved for reproduction stays with us to fortify, to fortify our bones and our brains. Other female primates are fertile until they die in their 50s. But menopause gives us humans longevity and the ability to help rear grandchildren, those grandchildren with big brains and long weaning times. American evolutionary anthropologist Kristen Hawkes explained menopause as the grandmother hypothesis because grandmothering increased the grandchildren's ability to survive and to thrive. Grandmothers are libraries. They remember hunting grounds. Just like menopausal orcas lead young males in their pod to where they remember fish were plentiful decades ago. Women have always lived a very long time, living for many years after reaching menopause. And there is evidence that they lived even longer when they were hunter-gatherers. Unfortunately, life expectancy has traditionally been measured by lumping together females of all ages. If a woman survived infancy and she survived childbirth, she had a good chance of living past 70. The idea that menopause causes both physical and mental decline comes from the ideological position that women exist only for reproduction. It is an idea, a prejudice, not based on science. It's actually contrary to science. Human women, human women evolved to live a long time with our strong bones and sharp minds. And just like men, we evolved to, to enjoy a healthy and productive life until we die. Just not to have children until we die. Because bearing children is nutritionally and physically expensive. So menopause gives us capable and vital longevity do you think we evolved to live so long in misery? I don't, and I will explain why some of us have these symptoms and how to avoid them at any age. Thank you for listening, and tune in to the next video.